Y'all give it up for my homeboy, Jason Granger. Come on, y'all, let's get it going, man. Duval, what's happening? Everybody all right? Yeah. DJ, I ain't tell you to cut it off. I might have wanted to dance a little bit. You done cut a little music? Cut it off, DJ, I'm done. You done killed my whole vibe. Everybody all right tonight? Yeah. Jacksonville, we here? Yeah. Real Jacksonville, we here? Yeah. Y'all don't want to say it no more since the Jaguar stole it. <laughs> They've been saying that at the club for 15, 20, 30 years now. Oh man, it's crazy. I'm glad everybody came out tonight in the rain. It's crazy. This that rain outside Forrest Gump we're talking about. That sideways rain, stinging rain, rain that comes up from the ground. Oh man, I started to take a boat here. I live downtown. I was like, man, them streets too wet for me. That's crazy. You laughing? You, you going live? My baby mama sent you here because she, she know I made money doing this and she's going to try to modify it. You got to chill out. Mm -mm. Yeah, keep that in that bag. Everybody enjoy the holidays? Yeah. Nobody? Uh. Oh, this that sophisticated crowd here. This that sophisticated crowd. That crowd want to get in here. Y'all mad already, too. Show about to start at 7.30. Y'all keep walking back there tapping me like, what's going on in here? All right, shoot, man. Weather delay. I don't know what else to tell you. Huh. But shoot, I love the holidays, man. Holidays got some good things about it and some bad things, man. You know, the good part is family. Y'all know, clap, look, clap it up for your family in the holidays. Yeah, yeah. I love my family, but my family a trip. You know, I got the typical black family too. That one auntie that always come around extra drunk, and the one uncle come around extra drunk too. I knew my auntie was extra drunk when she walked up to me talking about Hurricane Irma took all the cats out of Duval. I say, wait, what? I, I did notice it's like, a, it's like a deficiency of cats here. I don't know what happened with that. Maybe they got drowned out. But it's crazy, I had a dog one time too, and a tropical storm came by, and I looked in the gate after the storm, my dog was gone. So maybe she might be on to something. Maybe I ought to drink what she drinking, right? But it's crazy though, I got an uncle too. Man, my uncle, he one of them guys like to do the prayer for Thanksgiving. You know, we just had Thanksgiving, Christmas rolled through. He like to do the prayer. But I don't like when he do it. Cause he one of them people like, he'll do the prayer, but he take a deep breath after the first two words. That way you know it's gonna be a long prayer. Dear God, this year has been a year. I'm like, man, come on now, man. This year we've lost some people, we've gained some people. And I'm sitting there looking at the food already out, getting cold. I ain't never ate hot food on Thanksgiving at my uncle's house. He's so long-winded. I told the uncle, I said, blessed, blessed are the short winded for they shall be invited back. Oh, man. Or at least that make me come back. Shoot. I started messing around going to eat, eat with white people on the holidays, man. Because one thing about it, ain't no 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock dinner for them. White people eat dinner right at 11 o'clock in the morning on Thanksgiving. Am I lying? White people back at the bar, he knows our stuff, yeah. But, it, but see, it's pros and cons with that, too. Because you know what I'm saying? Like, it's pros and cons with my family. It's pros and cons with eating with white people. Like, uh, like uh, Antoine said, you know, they'll bake the potato salad with the dog sitting right there. Lick the dog be licking the spoon instead of the kids. I be like, oh, snap. That's what y'all ever notice we don't really eat at the potlucks? <laughs> we don't really know what y'all be having going on at the house. You know, it's all good, you know, for y'all, but nah. <laughs> Is that Aquaman at the bar? Oh, y'all give it up for Aquaman at the bar. Jason Momoa in the building. Oh, that tripped me out. He messed up my whole joke. I just, I say, wait a minute. I, and it's crazy, I got a water from you earlier too. Ain't that so? That's ironic. Oh man, Aquaman gave me a water. I'ma tell my mama, mama, Aquaman gave me a water. Oh man, oh, mama ain't drinking water over there. You finna be lit. I'ma call you a Uber. And you finna stay at my house tonight. You going back to yours. Don't, don't sip too hard. Huh. But yeah, you know, eating at you know, white people's house is crazy because you know, they like to put raisins in some of everything. I'm like, I didn't know you could season chicken with raisins. You know, and string bean casserole and all this stuff here. And then, you know what I'm saying? She laughing. You ate at white people's house too? No, it's crazy. Then the macaroni, though, that's what messed me up. Like, the white people, they'll boil the macaroni and just throw cheese in it. They never turn the oven on. I'm like, you got to bake my macaroni. And then you go boil up some breadcrumbs and call it a dish. No, I'm not going for it. But th the thing is, you know, if you're going to make macaroni and you're going to invite people over, before they get there, just get on Google. Google nigga macaroni. Don't wait till they get there and let them see you type that in. 
But before they get there, Google nigga macaroni. It's all the steps on there, and it includes the oven. It's going to bless your life, and your dinner going to turn up. I'm telling you. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. Shoot. Y'all all right? Huh. My man over there got his feet propped up and all. I'm telling you, this is a Sadiddy crowd. That 10 o'clock crowd going to be way different. That's when the thoughts coming out. Juicy Crab's still open right now, so they ain't here. My wife hit me up. She said, Ho's going to be at that show? Because if so, I'm coming to both of them. I can't make this up. She said, so I'm coming to both of them. I said, baby, Ho's going to be at both shows and the after party. I said, but you can't, you can't hang like they hang. They made for this. You ain't built for that, baby. You might as well go home and get ready for me to come and tap that shoulder. Huh. Yeah. But shoot, I used to feel good about having sex with my wife. You know what I'm saying? But she kind of, she hurt my feelings the other day. I was at a restaurant with my brother and sister. My wife walked in there late like she was some celebrity or something. Gave me $8 and said, thank you for last night and walked off. I said, I can't even get the double digits with the 10? Oh, man. I bought me a drink and took it straight to the head with that $8. I felt so sad. Huh. Hey, baby. <laughs> but no, it's crazy, man. Y'all saw that. Y'all y'all know what's going on. Y'all saw that new movie out? Birdcage. I told you. Oh, no. Nah. Nah, I'm going to talk about the movie because it's crazy. You know, everybody was talking about the movie, but, you know, I watched something. I have my own interpretation of it. Everybody saw Bird Cage? Clap if you saw the movie. Hey, Bird, what's the name of it? Bird, Bird who? Bird Box, whatever. It's, y'all knew what I was talking about. Bird Box. Now, the whole movie, like, I don't know what y'all interpreted, but my whole thing when I watched it, I thought Sandra Bullock, whole thing in the movie was trying to kill kids. Like, because at first... You laugh, right? Because at first, she flipped the car over with a pregnant stomach and landed on the stomach, right? After that, she out there talking to the lady, and the lady like, hmm, it's just a little wine. You know, she was like, I don't, I don't know. Then she drinks the wine. I'm like, she's trying to kill the baby. And so then I thought, oh, maybe it's just a little coincidence. Then the dude went to the grocery store and had the whiskey. It's like, huh, it's a whiskey to worry about the end anyway. You might as well drink the whiskey. I said, she really don't care nothing about these babies at all. And you know how I really know she don't care about the baby, especially the, the little girl. That wasn't hers. She don't care about the right. She got my right. She didn't care nothing about that baby because, you know, they had the blindfolds the whole movie. And she was in the boat with the boy and the girl talking about, one of y'all going to have to look so I can steer this boat. The little boy said, I'll do it. She said, no, no, no. I'll pick. I'll pick. Who does it? The little girl's like, I know where this going right here. I know what you're trying to do to me. I'm like, shoot. And the reason, the, another way you can tell she don't care nothing about them kids, she didn't even give them real names. Boy. And girl, she don't care nothing about them children. And then Lil Rel was in the movie, man. You know, you know the black guy always died first. You know, she talking about yep, yep. But he should have died. His acting was terrible. That joker there, man. Lil Rel came in there talking about, I'm not going to the grocery store. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to the grocery store. It got signs in there. You know where the stuff at. I get it if you can't read, but if you can read, and y'all can read, I'm like. Oh, die. So he just looked at the cooler. And when he died, I was so happy. Because he looked at the cooler where the dude was in there, about to kill him. He knew it. He wasn't even close to the cooler. And he runs across and dives in front of everybody and jumps in there. I said, he knew he was bad at acting. That's why he went ahead and ended that scene for himself right there. <laughs> it was crazy. She say, huh? Kind of laughed that one. That what you do when I tap that shoulder. <laughs> you know, I'm coming in that way, dude. <laughs> oh, man. But it's crazy. Where everybody from the hood at? Anybody from the hood out here? Give yourself a hand clap. Yeah, a couple of them. I know you would, dog. Oh, man. He's sitting at the bar there waiting on something to pop off. Got phone books taped to his stomach and all over there. Bro, this family here, we chilling. But no, nah, I'm from the hood, man. My mama grew, uh, brought me up in the hood. Had a good time, you know. But the, that blindfold thing, that's what I needed growing up because I saw some stuff. Like my next door neighbors, the people behind us, they sold dope, right? And I'm four or five years old looking at this. I needed to have my little blinders on. But it was crazy that they ain't just sell dope. They raise chickens. Right? He looked crazy. Up at the, that's what I'm talking about. He looked crazy. So you ever went to your neighbor's house and ate an omelet and ended up getting high? This was my childhood. Like, you didn't know what to do. Like, I don't eat a white people's house. And I don't eat a dope dealer's house either no more. Because you don't never know what's going on. The dog either licked it or the chicken got cocaine in them. I don't know. So it's crazy. <laughs> It's crazy, but it was cool, man. You know, we lived in, there was a lot of crime, a lot of stuff like that, police chases and stuff like that, but I was naive. I would see like a helicopter in the sky, and I thought that was the neighborhood watch. 
Little did, they, little did I know they was watching the neighborhood for suspects that was at large. So my mama, you know, she tried to do better, get her kids out the hood. So she moved up to the place I thought was going to be a magical place when we got there. She moved, I grew up on 25th and Mine Creek. So, you know, 20, everybody know about Mine Creek when they come in. That's why First 48 won't even come. He clapping. You from Mine Creek? Yes, sir. So he know. Yes, sir. Oh, man. So that's why First 48, they don't even come in. They fly over Jacksonville because of Mine Creek. But the thing about it is my mama, she tried to get us to somewhere better, a magical place. She said, we're going to move to Secret Village. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? The secret is it's just at the other end of Mine Creek. The secret is the crime rate was exactly the same. I'm like, nothing improved from going here. So she tried to do better after that. We moved, you know, Main Street, and we moved off Dunn Avenue. We moved to some apartments right on Dunn Avenue. And if you know, growing up in the hood, moving out of a house into an apartment somewhere else, that's an upgrade. You know, but it was crazy because we couldn't go, like, back on Turtle Creek where, like, the, the subdivisions was and stuff because we was a single-parent home. You know, you don't qualify to go in Turtle Creek if you just got one parent at the home. Turtle Creek got two parents, two kids, two car garage. We had to stay right there on Dunn by the Taco Bell. It was crazy, man. It was crazy. Shoot. Anybody, anybody live off Dunn? No? Somebody said, mm-mm. Nigga, wrap it up. Move on. Move on. But yeah, man. So I just, you know, my mama did a great job, but I had kids too, you know. I didn't mean to nothing my baby mama, but I did, and the kids are here now. But the thing is, I want to have like a, you know, a better life for them. Not that my mom did a bad job, but I just want to give them better, right? And so I treat my daughters a whole different way. You know, you know, I'm a dad to a daughter. My mom was a mom to a son. So when I see my daughters, I always make sure they don't look anywhere else for like acceptance or anything like that. They know that their daddy loves them. I always play with them too. Like, I'm your boyfriend. We ain't worrying about, you know, they're 16 now. We ain't worried about these other, you know, young men coming with their pants sagging all down and stuff like that. Your daddy, your first boyfriend. I love him. I open up doors and I, you know, I even flirt with him. I mess with him a little bit. So, mess around. I went to the school one day to pick him up. Went to the school and I saw my baby. She was walking. I saw my daughter. She was walking. So, I rolled up the car real slow behind her. I said, hey, girl, how you doing? You want to ride with me? You want to go get something to eat? You want to get in with, with me? I'm your daddy, girl. And she turned around. And it wasn't my baby. I hit the gas pedal so hard. All I could see in the rearview mirror was the girl pointing at the security guy and pointing back at me. I like, I'm jumping speed bumps and all that right now. To make a long story short, I can't go back to First Coast High School no more. Or any other school for that matter. You know, I just sit at the house. You know, I sit at the house watching TV where it's safe. But you know, you watch the TV, you know, you start hearing all these commercials and stuff. It's crazy because you watch it, and you know, if you pattern your life by what you see on TV, ain't no telling how you'll end up. Because people will trump stuff up, like that dog on Tulsa Welding School commercial. Y'all seen that with the dude? He talk about all this stuff he got that regular people got that ain't even tried to do nothing. Uh, I got an apartment. I, I got a girlfriend. I got a motorcycle. I put my girlfriend on the motorcycle right on the handlebars. I got a lot of fruit snacks in the cupboard, but I never get to eat them because I work a lot of overtime. You know, so I'm like, dude, who you trying to, who's your target audience? Who you trying to get to go to this school? I'm like, man, get out of here. And then, y'all, it's other commercial, man. Come on, TV and radio. Y'all finna feel this because I can't stand this dude. That Facillo Nissan dude. See, oh, that hit a special spot in your body. I thought a whole tiger just jumped out of you just then. That was that old cougar roar right there. Oh, I'm like, ooh, don't do that. Oh, man, you got a old some situation on your hand, don't you? But yeah, that Facillo dude, man, he talked about everything on the commercial but giving you a reliable car. He ain't never told you about the tires, no paint job, you know, how fast it goes, no price of that. He said they want to give you all this stuff. He talking to the girl on there. He used to have his son on the commercials, but now he be talking to the girl on there. I guess, you know, the, the, the girl done pushed the son out the picture or whatever. And he's like, Mackenzie, you know, I always wanted to be, you know, I always wanted to be Santa Claus, you know. I'm like, what? Are we selling cars of Christmas? What is we doing? He said, like, you know, I want to be Santa Claus. So he talk about, you know, I'm going to give the people, I'm going to give them a sound bar. I'm going to give them a TV. I'm going to give them a kayak. I'm like, all this stuff, I'm going to give them a 12-day cruise. We're going to go over there. We're going to come back. You know, if they're really nice, we're going to let them come in and shoot the basketball. You shoot the basketball, and the basketball goes in. Then Jill Scott walks in. You can get some Jill Scott head. And after that thing after that, it's going to be crazy. I say, wait a minute now. 
And you know the commercials get real sexual because the girl be like, yeah, that's right. That's right. Co-signing to everything you say. I say, she been playing in the man's pants. We got to watch out for Facillo Nissan. They gonna give you not a car, but they gonna give you STD and everything else too. We gonna give you, we gonna give you HIV. We gonna give you full blown AIDS. We gonna give you the whole nine. You don't have to worry about it. And anything after that, we gonna give you this penis because it's gonna be huge. I say, wait a minute now. Shoot. But on a serious note, man, you know, in the holidays, you know, I just did something that I, you know, something just hit my heart. You know, uh, Christmas Eve, you know, I wasn't having a good day, right? I couldn't put my finger on it, you know, what it was, you know, I couldn't put my finger on it, but I, it was Christmas Eve and something on my heart just was like, you know, I want since I'm having a bad day, I want to make somebody have a good day. So I decided I was going to pay someone's light bill for Christmas. So I put a post on Facebook and I said, you know, if someone needs their light bill paid, you know, refer them to me, but I didn't want like everybody putting their business on the status or hitting my inbox and a whole bunch of people doing that. And now I gotta tell people no, cause you know, I ain't got that much money, but I wanted to bless somebody, right? And I was like, you know, I couldn't figure out why I did it. But then, you know, my dad died recently this year. So I was like, you know, I ain't never had a daddy before. I mean, a daddy that died before. So I was like, man, let me go ahead and, um, <laughs> let me go ahead and figure out something to do to kind of cope with it. So I guess that's what it was. So I paid, I was able to pay four people's light bills and I hashtag Christmas lights. Yeah, yeah. I was very proud of it, and then the next day I woke up and I told God, I said, um, I ain't mean to do that. You know, because <laughs> I got a call from Navy Federal, and they was like, uh, you know, I thought it was somebody from the corporate office. No, nah, it was my branch manager, Ms. Armstrong, called me talking about, all right, nigga, you know you ain't had that money in the account. The last show you claim you had, the check ain't clear yet. I said, I know, Ms. Armstrong, I'm gonna make it up to you, though. I got another show next week, I'm gonna come out there and get it done for you. You know, so, but no, it was a blessing to do that, man. And, you know, comedy has helped me be able to do that, be able to do things for people. People give to me all the time, come to the shows. I was able to give back. So it was a great thing, man. But uh, to make that money back, though, I will have T-shirts on sale next week. Um, Y'all can go on jdgcomedy.com. And on my uh, page, it says uh, merchandise coming soon. It'll be Tuesday. So y'all hit me up. Shirts will be $20. That's my time, y'all. I'm Jay Granger. <laughs>